In Onshape, you can use implicit and explicit mate connectors in order to locate components in an assembly. Let's take a look at how to do that. Right now, I am in my assembly tab and already have a bunch of part studios in here. I'm going to hover over the tabs to show you what I'm going to locate in here. I'm going to make a clutch assembly and I'm going to start with a clutch body, then add in the left clutch shoe and the right clutch shoe, and then a spring. So first off, I will click on the insert command and it shows me the different part studios in my current document. I'm going to select the clutch body and rather than drop it somewhere in the screen, just by hitting the check mark, it's going to locate this component at the origin. Now let's click on it and use our right mouse button to fix it so this component will now be grounded. Bring in other components by clicking on the insert command and I'll bring in the left clutch shoe and I'm just going to locate it about over here and the right clutch shoe let's locate it about over here and that's good for now and I'll hit the check mark for locating the left clutch shoe I'm going to start off by adding a fastened mate and here's the icon for doing that and this time I'm going to use implicit mate connectors. When I hover my mouse over geometry, you're going to see these white circles and white squares, and those are locations where you can place your mate connector. So I'll click there. For the one on the clutch body, let's hover over this surface, and I'll pick this location over here. And it moves the components to each other. It finds the correct solution. I'm happy with that, so I will hit the check mark in order to have my first fastened mate. And it's automatically hidden. You can display it if you want to, but I don't need to see it in my graphics area. Let's repeat the process for the right clutch shoe. And actually, before I do that, let me reposition it the way I want it to be on the screen. I will click on it, and then I can start by rotating it. 180 degrees and let's also translate it over a little bit closer to where I want it to appear just so I can help make sure that I'm getting it where I want it to be and oh wait looks like I won't have it a little flipped so let's grab here Again, I didn't get exactly, but I'm just repositioning it before I define my different mates inside of here. All right, so this is good. Now let's just left click on the screen and we'll click on to add our fastened mate. And let's use from this surface in the model, I'll use that location. And that should correspond to, on this surface, that location over there. And it readjusts it. I'm happy with that, and I can hit the check mark. Be aware that if it ended up in the wrong location, you can flip the primary axis, and this command allows you to reorient the second axis. You also have the ability to define an offset in X, Y, and Z, but I want it exactly coincident at those different locations. So that is good for using my implicit mates. Now I'll go to bring in the spring component. I'll click insert and then spring and I'll just drop it on the screen about to over here. Let's hit the check mark and I will click on it and rotate it a bit and where I really want it to be is sort of like this between those two different locations. And this time, oops, let me just move it out of the way a little bit. There we go. This time, if I go to do a fastened mate, I really want to grab a location about over here. But again, because of the nature of the geometry, I don't have exactly the locations where I want to use. In this particular case, I can create an explicit mate instead of using an implicit mate. And you can create that mate either in the assembly or you can create it in the individual part. It depends on whether you want to use that particular mate connector in other different locations. And I will probably want to use that mate connector 
wherever I am assembling the spring. So I'm going to switch over to its part studio. I can click on the tab or you can click on the spring and right click and use switch to spring to go over to its part studio. And in advance of this, I actually created a sketch just to facilitate this process. Let me turn on the, oh, this, I did turn on the display of the sketch, uh, where I have a couple of points located where I want my mate connectors to be. So to create the mate connector, we have the icon right here in our command ribbon. You can see it's also the keyboard shortcut of control M and I'll click on it and you're going to locate the origin. I'm going to use that point that I selected. There we go, I have the vertex of the sketch. You'll notice that we have the orientation for the primary axes and the secondary axes. I can change that if I want to, but I'm just going to leave it the way it is. Let's hit the check mark. That creates our first mate connector. Let's create a, another one. I'll click on the mate connector and let me get the other vertex of my sketch. And in this case over here, you notice again we have our blue axis up, our green and our red, and you can use the flip button if you want to change the direction of the primary axis. You can also use the reorient if you want the green and red axes pointing in one of the other four orientations. You also have the ability to realign the primary and secondary axes. I could use in this case one of my planes to define that. Uh, and also again to find the secondary axis. There's also an option here to translate it in X, Y, and Z and also rotate about Z. But again, I'm just going to leave it where it is. Let's hit the check mark and I've got my two different mate connectors. Let's go to the left clutch shoe and I have a similar situation. I want to locate it in here and where I want to align that point is going to be into empty space where I don't have the necessary mate connector. So I'm going to unhide the sketch I created with a bunch of construction geometry and vertices. Once again, we will go to the mate connector command. And then for locating this particular one, let me grab, accidentally got the edge there. Here I have the vertex of the sketch and just to make it more in line with how I defined the original mate connector. In this particular situation, I'm going to realign the primary axis. I'll use this surface and that way I've got it pointing up in the same way that I want it for the spring. So let's hit the check mark. Now I will go back over to the assembly and now you can see my different mate connectors visible on the computer screen. Let's now put in a, another fastened mate. And for my mate connectors, here I will pick that mate connector of the spring and grab this mate connector of the clutch shoe. In this particular situation, it put in exactly the way well, I want it to be. So now I can hit the check mark. And in this way, I've used the explicit mates in order to locate a spring component that didn't have the implicit mate connectors exactly where I wanted them to be. Let's cancel it out of the mate command and that way I have my assembly finished inside of here. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creolewindshield.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.